You may have an issue with your dog. Yeah, no, you can definitely see me, right? Yeah, I can see you. <laughs> okay, you may have to position him. Is it coming? Another, another fireside chat. Early, before breakfast, on a Sunday. It looks like it's going to be a gorgeous day. Dad, can you please move your car? Dex, are you ready? Yeah. I appreciate you guys, and I appreciate you guys listening. Um, these are pretty cool. They're probably cooler for me than they are for you, but hopefully someday you guys look back, and you'll always have this, mm -hmm. right? So hopefully you, you remember COVID-19, and you're like, not only the, the negative impacts of what happened, but you, you get, you know, kind of these, these little stories about my life, and hopefully they'll help you guys uh, to grow. Mm -hmm. So where I left off last time, you know, we're going we're gonna to push past college. And um, when I left Yukon, and Yukon, by the way, was very similar to Maine in the fact that it was really rural, right? We had cows. It was, it was, it was very similar. So when I, when I made the decision not to go back to Maine, but to go down to Washington, D.C., it was a huge move because I knew nobody, right? And I went down there with literally, I think it was $1,200 in one of those um, belts that you can keep your money in and stay, and I knew nobody. Uh, I, I went straight to a, the closest town that I thought was in close proximity to Bethesda, Maryland, which is where the CoStar group or Realty Information Group at that time was located and didn't realize that Silver Spring is still a world apart, especially when I didn't know if I was going to drive to get there. I was afraid to drive to get to work. Uh, I ended up taking the J2, the bus, but I, I'm, I knew absolutely nobody. So I was petrified. You know, when you guys have changed, like what's that feeling when you went to high school? It was scary kind of. Right, for how long? About a week or two. Right, so, so picture that with, you know, you, you still were able to come back and have family. You know, and you're, there was some sense of normalcy, but you know, this level of change for me was a complete shock. I didn't know a soul. You know, went down there knowing that this was a pretty new company and that they had the potential to change the commercial real estate industry forever. And now that I look back at it, I'm really proud to say that I was a part of that. But it was painful because I didn't know anybody. But I did know that in order for me to move up and get ahead in that company, even though I had a degree in real estate, I needed to set myself apart. So the only way I was going to set myself apart was to put in more hours than other people to buckle down, learn more than everybody else, to figure out what management wanted, even if it wasn't for me, and try to solve those problems, to make myself stand out, right? So you always wanna figure out what other people want and try to solve the problem. And I did that, I was pretty darn successful. Um, there were some people, as we grew and as the company got a little bigger, as I started to progress and I started to grow with the company that, you know, had some issues with me. I was called the golden boy. And the reason I was the golden boy is because I was willing to put in the hours. I was willing to put in the time. I was willing to solve those problems. Other people, you know, if they just wanted to float and just be average, then they're probably the ones that are casting the stones. So remember this, that wherever you go, um, people like to, sh like to throw rocks at shiny things. So you want to be the shiny thing. I'm not saying you want rocks thrown at you, <laughs> right? You want to be friends with as many people as you possibly can, but you're never going to make friends with everybody. They're always going to be want to have you. They're always going to be people who want to drag you down. So, one indication that you're doing well and you're doing the right things is when you have people trying to drag you down and have people trying to cast stones. So I was really lucky enough to, you know, at an early at, at an early start of this, I, I needed some kind of normalcy, and I was lucky to bring Greg down and Jamie down so you know we we lived in group housing you know we lived mm -hmm. in an apartment uh, Jamie and I when we first went there lived in a, an efficiency which is one big room and we had couches and we were proud that those couches pulled out and they became beds <laughs> you know um, so we we live we learned quickly that your income needed to be greater than your expenses it had to be or else you weren't gonna make it unless you went into large credit card debt. So my goal um, was to push forward in that company as much as I possibly can, learn as much as I could, and educate myself 
and just push forward. Had a lot of fun too um, while I was there. But um, you know, I, that, during that time frame when I realized that in order to get ahead, I needed to fail. I needed to fail hard. So I learned that the more failures I had, the more success I had. And a lot of people were willing to point out those failures, but I knew that those failures led to success and so did management. I was really grateful for that. Um, at one point, I started traveling a lot. When I started traveling, I, first city was Pittsburgh and I wouldn't always fly there. I would drive there. So I took that uh, time to start to look, listen to books on tape. And you know, I'd listen to Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the whole series by Robert Kiyosaki. I went back to uh, how to friend, win friends and influence people. Just uh, this onslaught of books that really educated me. Because remember, you don't have to learn everything yourself. Just like I'm trying to teach you, you can go back and stand on the shoulders of other men. And those men have, and women have written books, right? They've written books for you to be guided. So I want to teach you with my failures. I want to teach you what I did. Um, and, you know, towards the the end of my stay at um, uh, CoStar Group, I had realized we had in fact changed the commercial real estate industry and that's what drove me. It drove me because I knew that I was part of something that was a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. So whatever you get into, whatever, wherever your life takes you, make sure that you're passionate about it. Um, the money, you know, at the time for me, my age was great. You know, I did very well. But it wasn't the money that made me happy. It was the fact that I felt that I was changing something. I was doing something for the good. Uh, I was part of something that I think will change the real estate industry as a whole forever. Um, and, and when I was entrenched in the commercial real estate industry, helping to solve other people's problems, because I was in sales, you know, my, my goal was to talk to enough people, figure out what their problems were and solve those. And I could determine pretty darn quickly, um, what the type of person was on the other end that I was trying to consult or sell to based on a bunch of different questions. So I would ask them these series of questions and I could figure out if they were a salesperson just trying to facilitate a transaction in the commercial real estate industry or they were actually trying to help the consumer, right? So I learned that asking questions is absolutely critical. So always make sure you ask questions exactly. and interpret the answers, right? One thing that I knew in the commercial real estate industry is they looked at the residential industry, especially the consultants in the commercial real estate industry, and completely looked down on the residential real estate industry and felt like it was just beneath them. It was below them. So that started to create this picture in my mind of why I never wanted to get into residential real estate. Um, I also learned that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Right? I mean, we can make some pretty bad decisions and just know that with every decision that you make, there's going to be an opposite reaction. Um, you'll learn that and you guys have started to learn that uh, <laughs> already. So um, <coughs> as we move forward, I want you to realize that these things created the foundation for me. Um, I got to a point where I, I feel like I was pretty darn valuable with the company and I think the company did as well because I was traveling all over the country, staying in hotels for six months at a time and really trying to solve some problems that they had and add as much value as I could. Um, after 9-11, 9-11 changed my thought process a little bit. Um, I wasn't too keen on jumping on an airplane after 9-11 uh, and I started to second guess what I was doing. Um, the relationships that I would make for six months at a time, I wouldn't see these people again, unless it was as a meeting that the company had. So I was creating relationships all over the country, um, not necessarily able to foster those relationships. And uh, I felt like I needed to slow down a little bit. And that'll lead me into our next chat that we have. Do you guys, do you guys have questions? You can you relate to your lives at all? No, you can't. I mean, getting in trouble wise, yes. Yeah? How about change? How about uh, being uncomfortable? How about being introduced to different situations that you're just, you know, you don't want to do it just because you've never done it before? Like when we have to go order our food or go ask questions to the store. Like right. That. You don't want to do it because you're no. why? Because you haven't done it before and you're not comfortable doing it. Right. And what could happen? You, they could 
tell you no. Tell you no. Or it just... You don't want to be heard. You don't want to be told no, right? No. I mean, you've had a hard time with that. Yeah. Or you get, you get, you're getting better though, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what happens is you do these things that are uncomfortable. The more you do them, the easier they get. Mm -hmm. And you realize that even if you do get rejected, it's okay. You know, and it's usually when you get rejected, it's not about you. Right. It's usually about the other person, mm -hmm. right? Um, so we're learning a lot of things and I continue to learn every day, mm -hmm. right? And I look forward to failing, which is crazy. People would say, why would you want to do that? You don't have peace of mind. Actually, I do. You know, if I feel like if I'm not failing, I'm not growing. So the other thing, fail forward. And I, I the, the only other thing I can, I can say that just came top of mind was, you know, wherever you are, surround yourself with people who want to see you succeed. Anybody that doesn't want to see you succeed or wants to drag you down or add a lot of drama, try to stay away from those people um, because they're going to attract people like them. And that's not who you want to be around. Okay? Hopefully they can change. But remember the whole saying, you can't teach somebody who to, teach somebody to swim if they're drowning. They've got to want it. They've got to save themselves once they get to the point of being, you know, okay, I can swim or I can keep my head above water. Now you can teach them how to swim. So, a lot of good lessons. Any questions? You guys just want to eat breakfast, right? Kind of. Yeah. Love you guys. Love, Love you. you. Okay. Uh,